Why? Hello and welcome everybody. Also, good morning. I just woke up myself. So today I wanted to go ahead and update you guys with the Righteous Fire Chieftain in SSF. More so, the reasoning for playing Chieftain right now is with the nerfs to Righteous Fire's late game. You know, not the necessarily like the league start, but the late game. I want to see if Chieftain ends up being a, a good candidate for kind of like SSF blasting, right? Uh, won't talk too much about that right now, but let me go ahead and jump into a quick tier 16 map. So uh, we've done a lot since yesterday. Yesterday I didn't get to make a video since I was a bit tired in the morning. Um, we are currently level 94. Um, took us pretty much until yesterday to get a Divine Vessel. So we're actually wearing Wanderlust up until we got our new boots, which we'll show our gear after. Rog really hooked us up. Uh, so yeah, we are level 94. Pretty standard skill tree so far. Nothing really is, I would say, that different from my Juggernaut. The only honest thing I could say is I have like an extra point here for Ignite Chance for the Explode. Other than that, it's pretty barebone. Like it's the exact same tree. I, I did also come over here to grab Sanctum of Thought, but the primary reason for this is because when you're running Wildwood um, you and you're running Blue for currency, you want sources of crit damage reduction. So I've got 30 crit damage reduction here and 30% crit damage reduction here. Still using Maj um, for no boots right now for movement speed until I can get some good charms and then I'll do a respec, I think. Okay, with that being said, let's go ahead and jump on into a map. I'm gonna show you guys my defensive layers. Just know my single target is unfortunately non-existent. It puts the Z in zero when it comes to DPS. Um, remember that because RF doesn't scale with gem level anymore, um, it's a little, it's a lot trickier to scale at this stage in the game right now because I can't like look for, uh, you know, flip RFs to get a 21 or look for a plus one plus one amulet or a plus one weapon that unfortunately I have to kind of just go through the grind right now of scaling my HP and overall improving my gear so one of the next big upgrades would be a dot multi amulet don't have that right now uh, but yeah let's go ahead and jump in real fast I'll show you guys my tooltip and show you kind of what I'm doing with the character so we're currently running purity of fire determination and skitterbot one way I can see myself potentially getting a lot more damage is maybe dropping Determination if I get like a Cloak of Flame and then I get like 50-60% conversion. That might allow me to drop uh, the term for Malevolence, but I don't know fully. Uh, currently rocking 40,000 armor with Molten Shell and Flasks, 35 without Molten Shell, 90 all res, getting our Chaos res up there, 60% crit damage reduction, and honestly for a Chieftain, our regeneration is fantastic, but that's also because of our boy Rog. The boy Rog hooked us up here. Um, so if I take off just a few pieces of gear here, I'm wearing a Kikizuru right now because it's actually insane. So, uh, okay, never mind. I actually can't show that because my gear goes red. But yeah, I got like a 17% life regen helm. I have 20% uh, life regen boots with uh, 85 life per second. And then 21% regen gloves. So all of this percent regen scales flat regeneration so well. With that being said, let's go ahead and jump in. So if you guys watched the previous video, you'll know that I was talking about trying to farm myself a barracks. Um, the primary reason for trying to farm a barracks is essentially for the like little chain prolif I will show you in a second here. We're just going to do some ritual. Now ritual is a terrible example of the, the barracks synergy because ritual would want elemental proliferation rather than ignite chaining. Anyway though, whenever you see one of these big explodes happen, um, Let's just see whenever we can get one. I don't know if there's enough density here. Hold on. Here we go. Whenever you see one of these big explodes happen, you'll notice all the mobs around it instantly die. Now that, that instantly dying mechanic there is basically getting an ignite on the explode, which again, you can get from the tree. You can get like 50% ignite chance. And then when that rolls an ignite, which is 500% of the monster's health, um, the barracks ring takes that ignite and anything that is nearby basically just gets disintegrated. Um, the reasoning for that is because the ignite off the corpse health is just so massive. One thing I did not know, which I think is some really cool synergy, is that the skitterbots actually proliferate the shock. I did not think that would happen because it's not technically your source of shock, it's the skitterbot, but it doesn't matter because the wording is just, if an enemy is shocked, it transfers it, right? They look unfortunate. One spot that this is actually a really good showcase for 
is blight. Uh, so let's see if we don't have like a super screwed up layout here. Looks pretty normal to me. Okay, yeah, let's go ahead and do a quick blight. Why not? Light is trying to spread. Okay, looks uh, not too bad here. Um, I think we're going to go for a stun meme build. So, oh, if you saw that, the like whole area pretty much just got deleted. That would be the um, explode occurring. So if you watch here, I'll just throw some traps. Once the whole minimap pretty much gets deleted, that is entirely from the uh, explode chain. So if you watch again, just look at the minimap there. See, it's kaboom. Ellie Prolif can sometimes yield similar results, but I am personally a much bigger fan of Barracks. Uh, it has the biggest showcase, I was, or biggest use in like things like Expedition. Look, here's a here's a gigantic Beyond boss. Let's see what happens if he gets ignited. Did the ignite hit him? Oh, the ignite hit him. Oh, it's going. It is going. Didn't quite die, but close. The hell is that? I have never seen that attack before. It's got to be from that Blight boss. <laughs> Note to self, Beyond and Blight is an easy way to trigger the boss. I never really thought about that. Interesting. So scaling this character further now, this is where I was talking about it's going to be a bit tricky. I'm currently rocking like a 195k RF and 174k fire trap. Not really very impressed with those numbers. However, the clear still feels pretty good. Again, for an SSF character that's still tanky, I'm pretty happy with the character's clear. Um, not sure on everything I can really do to further enhance this outside of trying to scale life. Scaling life can be a bit tricky of a mechanic, but I think Chieftain is probably one of the most better suited for it. Problem with scaling life on a Jug is I feel your damage is just not really going to be there, but Chieftain, on the other hand, has built-in really good clear already just from his explode. Um, so scaling life on Chieftain, I think, makes a little bit more sense, personally. But we'll have to see. Is uh, It's a pretty big shift to try to just scale your single target. The other option is dropping the minus 20 res node and trying to see if we can use that jewel. Uh, there's also some weird potential shenanigans with strength stacking because a lot of my gear just naturally rolled strength. So, actually, never mind. We're only at 360. I thought we were at like 500 strength. What? Okay, scratch that idea. Just kidding. There's also a uh, potential for looking for a vault breach gem. Uh, Vol Breach would be really nice because it would essentially allow us to open up a breach at a boss area, like say the map boss, and then get a essentially like an ignite from the mobs and then just chain it to the boss. I could see this being really good for guardian farming, especially if I'm tanky enough to just to, like sit there. Because most of the things don't like insta burst me right now. I mean, with damage mods, I can die, but outside of that, I'm pretty much fine. Oh, there go the bosses. So far, assuming RF doesn't, I mean, I know I'm hoping real hard here, assuming RF doesn't get reverted slash they make an alternate version that's the old one, I don't I don't see it happening, right? But maybe, maybe they will. Assuming that uh, it doesn't, I do potentially see myself releasing a RF Chieftain dedicated mainly for early league mapping in PoE and, and the SSF guide. Uh, primarily because, again, Chieftain doesn't really require a lot to get started. Even without the Barracks Respite, it's going to have the fastest clear of the RF builds um, in an SSF scenario because you don't have access to, like, buying a Six Link or a Legacy of Fury, etc., right? Okay, so speaking of Six Link... Um, the way I acquired my first six link, uh, not this one, because this one just dropped out of a ritual because it was corrupted. So it was like a corrupted ritual. The way I went about getting my six link this go around is typically the same way I get it most ways. 
Uh, <clears throat> with the blocking atlas set up, so the blocking atlas utilizes shadow shaping to favorite maps to block other maps, right? I went ahead and farmed uh, cage and museum. I hate museum, 0 out of 10 map. So this process is basically getting a museum map or a cage map and then blocking all of the maps around it. So that would be ghetto, uh, lava chamber, you can see the connector, right? Uh, maze and then plaza and that way when you are running a cage map as long as you have uh, close to 100% here ideally get 100% you have 100% chance for a mob to drop an adjacent connected map uh, and then that adjacent map would be museum and then you can kind of ping pong them back and forth cage drops a map called chains that bind so our first redeem was this uh, Lamar here and we're going to go ahead and use this I'm probably going to craft the Gravicious mod for is taken as x element once i do gravitious wandering path is also a great way to get betrayal nodes because it doubles them up so two percent each so that's six percent chance there and six percent chance there so we're currently rocking uh 13 juns so i'll probably get this to like maybe 20 25 uh, and then we'll work on kind of doing that so talking about the gear a little bit uh I've been IDing scepters a lot to try to look for something similar to this. Basically, this has a big fire multi-roll, and I just crafted fire damage. It's actually a really low fire damage craft, but it is what it is right now. Ideally, I'd prefer a fractured dot multi-weapon, and then I alt spam for plus one fire, and then I regal and multi-mod fire damage and ignite chance and fire multi. So that would require me getting lucky and dropping a fractured dot scepter, but that's what we're aiming for. Currently, I've got frost blink to turn purity of fire over here on my helmet um normally i'd say go with an elder helm but i haven't pursued the elder helm route so this is more of a tanky helmet so it's got fizz taken as lightning a little bit of aoe with eater mod you can also technically put um um what is it called mono reservation efficiency this may help me in the future if i keep this and then go for malevolence i'm not really sure there's a bit of min maxing here to figure out but this has my shield charge punishment life tap faster attacks remember use punishment on chieftain because this node right here <clears throat> prevents us from scaling more minus res. Maybe at super late game you can drop it, but it's part of what gives Chieftain its identity for a good budget mapper. Uh, over here, my amulet, it's got a prefix open. I'm waiting to craft uh, area of effect and area damage. Um, other than that, it just has a lot of dexterity. Arsonus is always my anoint of choice because it's just so good for its price. Um, you know, two greens and a blue with 10 multi and regen. Rise of the Phoenix. Um, so I actually have two Rise of the Phoenix. So my plan with Rise of the Phoenix is A, vol them to get... Uh, well, actually, I'm going to double corrupt them to try to get Fizz taken as X element instead of the Ellie res. The purpose of that is it's just a superior modifier. When you have a build, especially with 90 all res, uh, you really want sources of Fizz taken as X element because it just makes your armor more effective, protects you against physical overwhelm, and protects you against bigger hits. Now, I do actually have a shield here that has three max lightning res that I can technically convert to fire res. Um, and then I could technically craft life and exalt slam it, and it will be close to a hundred life shield with three max fire. Uh, because I'm pretty sure I can switch the lightning to fire, but I don't know if that's really worth it over Rise of the Phoenix. It really depends. Depends on a couple of factors. Uh, number one, I can still get max fire res on my boots, and I can still get um, maximum fire res by leveling up this purity to 23, which is going to be a bit of a nightmare. So if I can potentially get that set up, I could see myself switching over to this shield and essentially just losing some regen. <clears throat> but gaining more effective life and a little bit more armor, not that much more armor. It'd mainly be for the life. Um, so a little bit of wiggle room here with what we kind of do on the character. Uh, Chieftain's kind of got some unique progression here. The Kikizuru, I would like to personally drop for a nice resistance ring, ideally a chaos res ring, but it's a little hard to drop it because it gives me so much sustain, um, like incredible amounts of sustain. Remember, this character is currently scaling very heavily off of flat life regen, so if I remove this Kikizuru, I mean, shit, that's kind of like 500 HP regen. That's kind of giga. So the only way I can see myself dropping this right now is if I run Vitality, but Vitality means I need to put it on Arrogance, and then I lose like 400 health. I don't really want to do that, so it's a little bit of a puzzle right now. Um, there's always the chase for Immortal Flesh, but this uh, belt currently is giving me 45 Chaos Res, so... If I get a really sick Immortal Flesh, I could replace it with this Leather Belt, 
and then I could use um, like a Chaos Ring here instead, and the Life Regen will kind of offset. Remember that Kikizuru gives you three life per level, so at level 94, that's 9, 18, 27, that's 280 something HP. So that's quite a lot of flat life regen that gets scaled off of all the increases. <clears throat> uh, I forgot where we were with the gear, that's right. Uh, kind of derailed a little bit, my bad. Uh, so we got the Kikizuru, the barracks. So the six link was an easy craft again. I redeemed it with chains that bind. And then I pretty much just threw whatever essences I had on it. <clears throat> I got pretty lucky getting a physical damage reduction. I pretty much just called it there. The body armor doesn't have the best base stats, so I didn't want to invest too much currency into it. Uh, moving on to my boots. My boots were ROG, so ROG is uh, this beautiful guy that crafts all of this gear over here. You can find him in Expedition. This character is a 10 out of 10 Expedition Farmer. Sadly, I didn't get a showcase for you guys. Uh, so this guy right here, you can basically craft your gear from him. So I'm currently trying to craft like a better weapon, a better belt, uh, even though he gave me the current belt. Um, I don't know if I'll really get better boots because right now, they have a prefix open, which I will use Betrayal to craft probably Movement Speed and Onslaught, or Movement Speed and Unaffected by Chill. It's got a sick life regenerate with flat regen. I don't care too much for the strength roll. I would prefer, like, Chaos Res or Fire Res, but I am not going to complain about the five tier one boots here. Uh, yep, my gloves we ID'd the other day, just straight up Wisdom Scrolled. Pretty happy with them because we have a T1 life regenerate with T1 Chaos. These gloves are never getting unequipped, so they are going to stay there forever. This is currently where my fire trap is, so fire trap, trap and mine, life tap, control destruction. What I would kind of like to do is, like, suffixes cannot be changed, veiled chaos, hope to unveil plus two, and then craft life again. I don't know if I want to gamble them, but it's a good idea because the plus two is kind of big for the fire trap right now, since it's not in an elder helm, and the AoE node is just nice on an AoE build in general. Uh, and later on, if I do upgrade to an Elder Helm, I can put the auras in my gloves anyway. Uh, yep, yeah, that's pretty much the character. Hope you guys enjoyed the deeper explanation. Uh, sorry if I ranted a little bit there. So that's pretty much uh, about it. Hope you guys had a wonderful time. Hope you guys enjoyed yourselves. If you did, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And don't forget to catch me streaming live every day but Sundays at twitch.tv slash box. See you guys all tomorrow.